What's happening, y'all? This is Andrew from Mirror Music 99, and we're going to do a little something different today. This is going to be part of a series that kind of continues with the English teacher bar breakdowns um, called Literature You Can't Teach in School, because there are so many good songs and so many good pieces of literature, or things that I would call good literature, um, that there's no way I could get away with teaching and as my real job as a public high school teacher. Uh, <clears throat> the first episode of this is going to be on Nas's I Gave You Power, which is, you know, I know jumping jumping in at the deep end of this um, of, of this thing because it's one of the most iconic songs in Nas's catalog. It's one of the most iconic songs that's ever written. Um, also, while I, before we get too much into this, um, this is going to be like a first take reaction. I mean, I'm obviously familiar with the song, but I haven't like broken it down. Like I don't have notes hidden somewhere where I'm just kind of breaking, uh, we're kind of going back and forth in notes. So this is just what I see as I see it. I'm going to talk about it both as um, what the points that he's making are, like, and how he accomplishes that, right? Like the literary devices that he's actually using in the text. One final note before we get started. Um, there is a, seems to be a long and storied history of, YouTube videos, reaction videos to the song that are basically um, white man suddenly realizes that he's talking about a gun um, or that he really is is a gun. That's not what this is. Um, I'm aware of that. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, um, sorry. All right. As an English teacher and an analyst, I do think it's important to read aloud the poem, lyrics, whatever. I'm um, obviously... Um, Given the circumstances, I'm not going to be reading the N-word, obviously. I'm going to leave it on the page because I do want to give you the full effect of the poem slash song, but I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm going to replace it with people um, because that will, um, the the rhythm of that word is the same anyway. So it gives, it, it doesn't take away from, or doesn't take uh, too much away from the, the meaning of the thing. Um, so... Here we go. I'm going to. I've got this broken down into um, verses, essentially, um, and choruses and stuff like that. So I'll kind of talk through it as I see it, um, as we go. So this is Nas's "I Gave You Power." Damn, look how motherfuckers use a person. Just use me for whatever the fuck they want. I don't get to say shit and just grab me. Just do what the fuck they want. Sell me. Throw me away. People just don't give a fuck about a person like me, right? Like I'm a like I'm a gun, shit. I'm like it's like I'm a motherfucking gun. I can't believe this shit. Obviously, you can tell immediately why I could never get away with this in a southern public high school classroom. Um, so I might put an NSFW um, or not safe for schools <laughs> tag on this too. I seen some cold nights and bloody days. They grab me, bullet spray. They use me wrong, so I sing this song till this day. My body is cold steel for real. I was made to kill. That's why they keep me concealed under car seats. They sneak me in clubs, been in the hand of mad thugs. They feed me when they load me with mad slugs. Seventeen precisely, one in my head. They call me Desert Eagle, semi-auto with lead. I'm going to come back to this. I'm seven inches, four pounds, been through so many towns, Ohio to Little Rock to Canarsie, living harshly, beat up and battered. They pull me out. I watch as people scattered, making me kill. But what I feel, it never mattered. When I'm empty, I'm quiet, finding myself fiending to be fired. A broken safety, people place me in shelves under beds. So I beg for my next owner to be a thoroughbred, keeping me full up with hollow heads. Okay, so we have this part up here is like the intro, kind of, and this is the first verse. Um, the things I notice immediately um, are here in this little intro. Um, there's the, the idea that goes throughout the whole poem, the whole song, of, of being used, right? Um, guns are literally used, obviously, but... Um, Nas is using it both ways, being used as in being abused, right? He's used in a way, if you're talking about somebody being used, you're usually talking um, about somebody taking advantage of them, right? You're usually talking about them being um, used in a way that they would not necessarily want to be used, and I think we'll see that throughout this, um, this poem song, too. 
Um, you know, I mean, he doesn't get to say anything. He just grabs me, do whatever they want, right? Um, and obviously, the theme or one of the things that goes is going throughout this is, is about I gave you power, like I being the gun gave you power that you didn't have already. Um, there's a lot of commentary in there. Obviously, it seems that is about the per- person who's holding the gun feeling powerless, right? And they have to hold the gun to feel powerful. Um, there's there's that going on as well. Um, like, so, this line right here, people don't just give a fuck about a person like me. Um, I mean, that's social commentary, obviously. But... And then he goes like I'm like I'm a gun, right? This is almost like a realization, right? So the thing, I mean, this is obviously personification. You guys know what personification is if you're listening to this video. I assume, um, and you're interested in the song, personification is giving human characteristics to inanimate objects, right? Um, which is what the, the rest of the song does. It is giving human characteristics to a, a weapon, right? Um, but this beginning part right here is so, so important, I think, to the song because that's the part that's being spoken as Nas, right? Or as a human speaker. And it's almost like the speaker is having a revelation, like where he goes, I like I'm a, I'm a like it's like a, I'm a gun. Like I'm realizing this as I'm saying it, yeah. So because people don't care about me, it's like I'm a gun, right? So it is personification in the sense that in the rest of the song he's going to be giving the ways in which his him he is a gun. He's given like human characteristics to the gun, right? Um, but we can't not notice the other twist of this, right? Which is set up here and is finished at the end. Um, which that the fancy word for this is called metonymy. Um, that's the English teacher word for it. That is taking an item and using it to represent a person or a, a whole entire thing. It's like, the the example that comes to mind is like when you call like a faceless businessman at the top of a company call him a suit right that's a metonymy so he's personifying the gun giving human char- characteristics of the gun but he's also doing it the other way around he is using the gun to represent himself does that make sense um, he's doing both of those things, and I've heard a lot of people talk about the personification in this song, but not anybody talk about that, too. There's, as with most Nas things that I've discovered, there are lots of layers to this. Um, I want to make a special note of the one in my head part. I mean, obviously, the one in my head works on, like, several different levels. Um, I mean, the second the second verse starts up with... Um, make comparing the gun to a penis too, right? And so it has that, that you know, that not joke, it's not a joke, but that reference, right, the head. Um, the literal meaning of that line here is one in my head, like inside the gun, right? That is part of um, the gun's anatomy, so to speak. But obviously somebody, I mean, those of you, I assume nobody's watching this video that hasn't already heard the song and wants to hear a breakdown of it. But um, the end of it ends with um, somebody getting shot in the head, too. So so one in the head kind of is the, I guess you call it foreshadowing, right? You, it's the beginning of the, the metaphor that's going to come all the way back around at the end. Now we have the hook. How you like me now? I go blow. It's the shit that moves crowds, making every ghetto foul. I might have took your first child, scarred your life, or crippled your style. I gave you power. I made you buck wild. How you like me now? I go blow. It's that shit that moves crowds, making every ghetto foul. I might have took your first child, scarred your life, or crippled your style. I gave you power. I made you buck wild. 
Always I'm in some shit. My abdomen is the clip. The barrel is my dick uncircumcised. Pull my skin back and cock me. I bust off when they unlock me. Results of what happens to people shock me. I see people bleeding, running from me in fear. Stunningly tears fall down the eyes of these so-called tough guys. For years I've been used in robberies, giving people heart to follow me. Placing people's in graves, funerals made because I was sprayed. I was laid in a shelf. Oh, I love that because it goes back to this too, right? In a shelf with a grenade, met a wrecked up tech with numbers on his chest that say 5209385 and 0. Had a serial defaced, hoping one day police would place where he came from, a name or some sort of person to claim him. Tired of murdering, made him want to be a plane gun. But yo, I had some other plans. Like the next time the beef is on, I make myself jam right in my owner's hand. So there's a lot going on here, too. Um, this is the chorus. I mean, it's a repeated part, right? Um, so this is using subtle, what's called onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Um, where the sound of the word imitates the sound that's being made, like bang or smack or whatever, right? Those, they're, they're percussive words that the definition of the word is the same as the the meaning of the word. Um, the the blow is one of those, like, because that's mimicking the sound the gun makes when it goes off, right? Um, but the subtle thing that he does in the chorus is he echoes that sound. So if blow is the sound a gun makes, he's not just doing it once, right? You have it there, 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 uh, there kind of there, there, I mean, so, so it repeats again there. So it's like, you know, 10 or 12 times in that chorus where it's, it's almost like it's going off, right? That's, that's the part of the metaphor and that's how it builds, right? It's not just, and that's one of the geniuses of Nas. It's not just that one time it happens, it happens over and over and over and over again. And it, that kind of amplifies the feeling of the song, right? Um, Obviously, we have this as some literal personification where the parts of the gun are parts of the body, right? Um, but he also goes here, like fall down the eyes of the so-called tough guys. So you have, you're going from like gun parts as human parts to like, it's referencing like actual parts of actual humans, right? It's got both of those things. Um so there's lots of stuff going on here, uh, but this right here is where, if you were talking about a sonnet or just a regular poem, you call this the turn. Um, where, whoa, that was awful. The turn to U R N. So where the great poems um, and great songs too um, kind of tilt. A little bit right you're going in one direction um, where he set up you know this I am this this gun has human characteristics okay you've got that conceit you're going with that you're moving forward with that and then it, then it kind of tilts a little bit right because we think of generally speaking in the wider culture guns as being unemotional right the the gun itself is not a doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have. It's a. I think what he uses at the beginning it was cold steel, right? It's just a machine, right? It doesn't have any emotions. But this, you start getting more and more emotional content as this goes along, right? And this right here mirrors the and what you're going to see in the third verse too mirrors that opening. Um, damn like the people will just use me for whatever they want right and being kind of unwill that that gives you like unwillingness right um i make myself jam right in my owner's hand that obviously is very dangerous um for the owner but um is less dangerous for the other the person that's being aimed at but if there's so much going on there it's giving the gun the person some kind of autonomy, right? 
the gun that's where the gun is the first the first place it's making a choice for itself not just doing what the owner wants them to do which fits with the larger metonymy the metaphor right where the idea is that the people have a choice right i mean you there's so many songs in the hip-hop canon that even I know, go back to children's story and beyond probably, that w- where it feels like the the protagonist of the story doesn't really have a choice in the matter. They're just kind of being pulled along for the ride by the circumstances that they're in. Um, and I think at some level Nas is arguing both that that there is there is a choice somehow right um that there is that they, you don't have to be used via this metaphor right you don't have to be used um, unless you choose to be all right this is the third verse yo weeks went by and i'm surprised still stuck in the shelf with all the things that an outlaw hides besides me Ooh, that rhyme there too that's nice so I'm, besides me, it's bullets, two vests, and then a nine. There's a grenade in a box, and that tech that kept crying because he ain't been cleaned in a year. He's rusty. It's clear he's about to fall to pieces because of his murder career. That's definitely uh, a matonic. Like, he's it's, it's using that as a metaphor for a person, too. Um, he's about to fall to pieces because of his murder career. You know, I can hear somebody coming in, open the shelf, his eyes bubbling. He said it was on. I felt his palm troubled him. Rhyme there too, right? Um, Shaking, somebody stomped him out. His dome was aching. He placed me on his waist the moment I've been waiting. My creation was for blacks to kill blacks. It's gats like me that accidentally go off. Ooh, see, so you have the that rhyme there, right? Blacks and blacks and accidentally. Like, you have that rhyme in there too. Go off, making people memories. But this time, and it's, it's fun to have memory. Not fun. It's another layer of metaphor to have memories go along with the the out of my head stuff too right um but this time it's done intentionally he walked me outside saw this cat cocked me back said remember me he pulled the trigger but i held on this is the gun having its own opinions right it felt wrong knowing people is waiting in hell for him he squeezed harder i didn't budge sick of the blood sick of the thugs sick of wrath of the next man's grudge what the other kid did was pull out no doubt a newer me in better shape before he lit out he led the chase my owner fell to the floor his wig split so fast i didn't know he was hit it's over with and that, this happens also at the end of the song right it's over with he's kind of saying the end a little bit Heard mad people screaming, people running, cops is coming. Now I'm happy until I felt somebody else grab me. Damn. So there's a thing in poetry. Um, there's plenty of um, closed forms, they call them, like sonnets and villanelles and whatever, where the first line of the poem is also the last line. Um, the damn also does that. It's, it takes you back around to the first line as well. Um, and... It fits because this, now I'm happy until I felt somebody else grab me. I mean, that is coming full circle as well, right? It's the story that we've got going on in this whole song is a story of a gun slash person um, in the metaphor who is going along with the stuff that's going on around them. This kind of, they're kind of being pulled along into situations they don't really want to be in, but they're going along with it anyway until they finally get fed up and say, no, I'm not doing this anymore. And they get somebody killed, and they, and it all starts over. The, the, it, then it all starts over again is the, the sad part, right? It's the part that, I mean, all of it's sad, but the part where it feels the most hopeless, right? Um, like this, in, in the metaphor, the gun is never going to be able to um, get out of the cycle, right? They're never going to be able to release themselves because there's always going to be somebody else out there pulling them in to the situation. Um, obviously, I cannot comment on the on, on that, that experience because that has not been my lived experience. But... Um, that seems like the metaphor or the, the argument that he's making. Um, man, 
this is, I mean, I can t- I'll talk about some more stuff too, I guess. Um, there's lots of head metaphors too. I mean, the what we talked about in the on the in the first verse, you have the head here, um, and so there's lots of other ones too in the wig split, right? Um, so the head is obviously the um, the center of thought, right? Um, and that's and you have a gun now in this or in in the metaphor of the song, where it's coming to life so to speak right it is coming becoming aware of its surroundings and in that way is um, able to make some decisions for themselves Um, and I guess what you see in the song is that all the decisions are bad right not they are making bad decisions but all the decisions that are possible to be made, they all have negative consequences, right? Um, And, I mean, there's so much going on here. You have the idea that that the person carrying the gun has no power, because, I mean, the whole song is, I gave you power, right? Has no power unless they have the gun, um, which which is sad. Um, that they don't feel like they have any power in the, I mean, to me, power in this, um, in this song, it does mean like literal, like strength, power, like muscle, like power, like ability to defend themselves, power. But I think more importantly, it's a stand in for the word agency, um, as in like, it allows somebody, or the person thinks anyway, that it allows them to make their own decisions, right? It gives them the freedom to make their own way in life, as opposed to having it decided for them. Um, but, I mean, if, if we're following this metaphor all the way down, um, we have to, to say that the argument here, right at the very end is that there is no way out um, that there there will always be somebody else there will always be something else there will always be um, another another hand to pick you up so to speak all right y'all I know I climbed in at the deep end of the pool here um, I hope that made sense I hope that was helpful um, also make sure you understand I want to make sure I say it out loud again this was just like a one take thing this is not edited this is not I don't have any like notebooks or notes or hidden anywhere I'm just doing this off the top of my head Um, so this is just kind of how I would start thinking about breaking down a song like this I know this is um, an intense one but people have been asking me to talk about I gave you power for a while to do a reaction to it Um, I may still do that but I also felt it was kind of disingenuous to do an I Gave You Power reaction when I kind of knew the primary conceit of the song. So, and I, I don't want to lie to people on here. <laughs> so, um, I thought I would just do a little, a little lyrical breakdown. Obviously, there's more to it. There's this, this video, which is probably already in the 25 to 30 minute range, um, could probably get close to an hour if, if we were like breaking down stuff. Um, in, in super, super depth. but um, So maybe we'll do get into that sometime. Um, there are plenty of other songs in the world. Um, also, shout out to Nas. This is an incredible, incredible, incredible song. You all, if you've made it, especially if you've made it this far in the video, you know that. Um, so shout out to, to Nas. Um, we appreciate your craft. Um, and this has been an episode of Literature You Can't Teach in the Classroom. So take care, y'all. We'll see y'all next time.